Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, The Explicit Tutorials. As you all know, my name is Dr. Joseph. Please, as you are watching this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. And if you know you haven't been added to my WhatsApp group, it is very important you are added. Chat me up on 091-611-5375, alright? You can save my number as Mr. Explicit. So that when I uh, post a video on my WhatsApp status, you would see it. All right. All right. This topic has been introduced already. I've given us the general features or characteristics of phylum Slenterata, and of course, we treated a class Hydrozoa. So, in today's class, as time permits, if time will permit us, we'll be taking two classes: class Carpozoa and class. Alright, let's get started. Now, the first thing you must note, or the first thing that is worthy of notes regarding every class of an organism, is the general features possessed by the organisms in that particular word, class. Now, you have class Scyphozoans. So, what are the features of the Scyphozoans? The Scyphozoans are the organisms found in the class. Now, take note that these guys, they are completely they are exclusively or completely marine. If they are exclusively marine, it means that they are best found adapting in salty environments. All right, they are all found in the seas and what oceans, salty environments. You know that seas and oceans have high level of salinity, high level of what salt in them. All right, so please, they are all marine. None of them is found in fresh water, okay? Unlike the hydrozoans. Unlike the hydrozoans, you know that most members of the hydrozoans are found in marine uh, environments, but a few are found in freshwater environments. So please take note of that. Now, number two, the organisms found in this class are called true jellyfishes. The organisms found in this class are called true jellyfishes. Why do you think they are called true jellyfishes? They are called true jellyfishes because the mesogly, because the mesogly forms the bulk of forms the bulk of the medusa. In our previous class, I did say that the mesogly is the connective tissue it is a form of connective tissue that form that joins the outer ectoderm to the inner endoderm all right and these organisms i said they are diploblastic in the sense that they have two layers so the form of connective or the form of gelatinous connective tissue that joins the outer ectoderm to the inner endoderm is called what mesogly all right Take note of that, it is very important. So the mesogly forms the bulk of the medusa, and that is why they are called what, true jellyfishes. I believe that is good enough. Number three, the most that is the conspicuous and most dominant phase in the life cycle of this organism is called what, the medusa stage. I told you in a previous class that hydra is completely polypod. Hydra is what? Completely or what? Exclusively what? Polypoid. Take note of that. The phase that these organisms are known with is called what? Medusa phase. That's why they are said that it is the most, it is the most uh, dominant and conspicuous or obvious phase seen in the life cycle of these organisms. Please take note that the Medusa stage is a conspicuous and most dominant stage in the life cycle. All right. Number four. Take note that the the polyp, the polyp of these organisms, all right, is reduced to a small larva. It's reduced to what? A small larva. All right. It's reduced to a small larva. Take note of that. Also note that these organisms. They lack stomodium. 
Please claim that these organisms lack stomodium. How would you describe the stomodium? You may be asking, Uncle, what is the name of this grammar, stomodium? Stomodium is like a, it's a depression found in the ectodermis of certain organisms such as jellyfishes that gives rise to the mouth. It's a depression found around the ectoderma region that gives rise to the mouth. That is what stomodium, right? They, they lack stomodium. This organism lacks stomodium. And I also said that the hydrosoans lack stomodium as well. Take note of that. Now, these guys, they have a, they have manubrum. They have manubrum. They have manubrum. And this manubrum, all right, is, um, is drawn out in the form of what? Four to eight oral arms. I trust AB department. They'll ask you which, okay, this manubrum is drawn out into the dash, into dash, four to eight arms. They'll start, they'll confuse your destiny. So please take note that the manubrum is drawn out into four to eight what? oral arms. Take note of that. It is very, very important. You may also be asking, sir, what is the function of the manubrum? Please, the manubrum is that part of an organism called jellyfishes that extend from the low, that extend that extends from the central uh, on or that is on that edge of the organism into the mouth. All right, you can say that the the, the manubrum is actually a structure that joins the central part of the organism to the mouth. So if this if this structure is found connecting the central region to the mouth, so what does that tell you? It tells you that the mandibrum carries out the function, function of what feeding to an extent, all right? It helps the organism to take food into its what body. It brings food into the mouth of what the organism. That is the function of what the mandibrum. I believe it's clear enough. However, I I, I rub off. Okay, however. The the scaphozoa medusa, the scaphozoa medusa, is similar in structure to the uh, hydrozoa hydromedusa. The scaphozoa medusa is similar in structure to the hydrozoa hydromedusa. Now, I told us in our previous class that the hydromedusa in class hydrozoa has a shell like structure made for what? Swimming. And you call that what? Velum. I told that the hydrozoa, the hydromedusa found in high class hydrozoa possesses three structures velum. Statocyst and what nerve ring, nerve ring. All right, the statocyst, statocyst is meant for balancing. Velum, which is a shell-like structure for swimming. Ah, yes, velum is a shell-like structure for swimming. This one is meant for balancing. And of course, the nerve ring is meant for what? Uh, transmission of impulses. All right, take note of that. It is similar in structure to this. However, the hydromedusa in this stage lacks velum and what? Nerve ring. I said the scaphozoa medusa is of course similar to hydrozoa hydromedusa. But in this case, the hydromedusa lacks velum and what? Nerve ring. Take note of that. It is very, very important. In contrast or in opposite to the hydro, to the class hydrozoa or to the hydrozoans, the mesogly of the true jellyfishes, the mesogly of the true jellyfishes, all right, is thick and fibrous. The mesogly found in a uh, class scaphozoa or the mesogly found in the scaphozoans, all right, is thick and not fibrous. 
therefore, this, these are uh, thick and fibrous mesoglea contains what is called amoeboid cells. If these organisms or if the mesoglea of this organism contains amoeboid cells, all right, it means that these organisms can undergo amoeboid movement, amoeboid movement. So please take note of that. It is very important. Also note that the gonad the gonad of this organism is actually endoderma in form. The gonad, what are gonad? gonad? Gonads are the reproductive organs of these organisms, such as the testes and what ovaries, all right? They are found in the endoderma region of what? The organism. So please take note of that. It is very important, all right? So, apart from what we've said, we, we can also establish the fact that this organism, they have other striking features, all right? They have other striking features. They have nematocysts. All right, the nematocysts, all right, of course, they are actually found in the tentacles. In the tentacles. The, the nematocysts are found in the tentacles, of course, that means around what? The uh, endoderm, all right? Endoderm. So please, take note of that. It is very, very important. Is there another one I'm not giving us? Okay, nematocyst. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so what I've given us uh, is just the general view of class Sky for Swan. Now, what is the representative member of this class? What is the most commonly known member of this class? The, the most commonly known member of this class is Aurelia. AU, right? It's what? Aurelia. Aurelia belongs to class Scyphozoa. Ubelia and Hydra belong to class Hydrozoa, all right? Now, how would you describe the Aurelia? Aurelia has an umbrella shape. So you see, it is umbrella-like in shape. It is what? Umbrella-like in what? Shape. Now, please, the, 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 there is a whole body of this organism, that is the outer surface of this organism is lined by structures called tentacles all right tentacles okay so please i said the matocyst is found abundantly on what on the tentacles please it is what ectoderma ectoderma all right so please i said this organism is what ermia like in shape and secondly the the, there is the margin of their body, that is the edge, the margin, the side of their body, the whole body is lined with tenta tentacles, all right, tentacles. So please take note of that. These organisms, of course, have uh, what is called radial canal, radial water canal. Apart from this radial water canal, there are other canals, such as the peridia, the peridia canal, the peridia canal, the ad, that is uh, ad radial canal, and interradial canal. Now, this canal is found, of course, uh, I said, these organisms they have sense like they have sense organs this organism they have sense organs called rupalia the sense organs found in aurelia is called what rupalia 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 and the nervous system of this organism is called what the net net 
The nervous system of this organism is called what? Nerve net. And the, the, the Rupalia, I said, is what? It's, it's, uh, the, the, they are the sense organs found in organism or relia. All right. The sense, the nervous system of these guys or the Rupalia of these guys are, in, are about eight in number. All right. They are eight in number. Sense organs. They are very what? Sensitive. All right, so please, that is for that. What about excretion? How do they excrete? How do they excrete? Please, excretion and respiration is via diffusion throughout the body surface. So please, excretion and respiration is via diffusion. Is via diffusion because I told us that this only uh, that is. Organisms in, in phylum Lenterata, they have incomplete digestive system, all right? They do not have anus, so that means they have the mouth, which means ingestion and digestion is through the mouth, all right? Respiration and uh, excretion in these organisms is through what? Diffusion, through their body or surface. Now, what about uh, nutrition? How do they feed? Please, they feed by the ciliary movement. When the cilium contracts and relaxes, food molecules are brought into their mouth. So by the ciliary movements of their body, which means that cilia possessed by them is meant for movement and also meant for what? Feeding, all right? So please, take note of that. That is, that is all about uh, nutrition and uh, Additionally, um, what about reproduction? Reproduction. Reproduction. Do you think these organisms are monoecious or dioecious? The hydrozoans, they are what? Monoecious. Because they have both a male uh, reproductive organ and a female reproductive organ in their body, alright? Monoecious, or you can say, they are bisexual or they are hermaphroditic. However, Aurelia is monoecious. It's dioecious. It is dioecious in the sense that it has what separate. It has separate sexes. It has separate sexes. It has separate sexes. Please take note of that. So I'll rub off this part. If it possesses separate sexes, then how does fertilization occur? Now, in terms of their reproductive mode, please, their gonad, their gonad would shed gametes, all right, in their stomach. Gametes, in a sense, are sperms and what? Eggs. I don't call them eggs, I'll call them ova. Ova is singular, then ovum is what? Ova is plural, ovum is what? Singular. Please, the ovum I'm, I'm referring to here is not for baking, eh? It's not for baking. So it's, 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 it's a sex cell or a. It's, you don't, if you don't call it a sex cell, yes? If you don't call it a sex cell, you call it what? Garments, alright? So please, once the sperms and eggs are shed, into their stomach, all right? They pass out into the water through the mouth. Once the stems and eggs are shed on their stomach, they pass out into the water through the mouth. As soon as they are passed out through the mouth, they get fertilized in the oral arms. They get fertilized in the what? Oral arms. Please don't forget that. They get fertilized in the oral arms. After fertilization, what happens? There is a release of the planular lava. There is a release of a type of lava called what? a planular lava. It doesn't stop there. This planular lava develops into a polyp. This lava develops into a polyp called 
hydratuba hydratuba or or scaphistoma scaphistoma please this question is going to come out the polyp that the flannel lava develops into is called which of these if you are not given hydratuba you'll be given scaphistoma all right so please take note of that now this scaphistoma or this hydratuba all right would undergo a type of a sexual reproduction called what strobilization a type of sexual reproduction called what strobilization when this lava when this poly strobilates what will be produced a feral lava is produced a feral lava is what produced and this feral lava develops into another word organism so the phase there is a life cycle continues like that first and first the gonads shed gametes stems and eggs into their stomach and the, the gametes passes into the water through their mouth then on the oral arms I told you that this manubrium is drawn out into four to eight words oral arms. On the oral arms, the this gamut get fertilized and this lava is what released. Now this lava produces a type of polyp called hydratuba or scaphistoma. Now this polyp produced undergoes a type of asexual mode of production called what? Strobilization. To produce what? Ephira lava. This ephira lava develops into another offspring. So the life cycle continues like that. So that is all about the class Kyphozoan. That reminds me, please, please, it is worthy of notes. This is highly worthy of notes. Please, movement in this guy. How do they move? Please, movements in Aurelia is brought about by the muscular contraction. It is brought about by the muscular contraction. It is brought about by the muscular contraction of striated of striated circular muscle. Hmm. Please, it is brought about what? By the muscular contraction of what? Striated circular muscle. And please, the movement in Aurelia is dash, is vertical, is seasonal, is diagonal, is horizontal. So, what do you think the answer is? Please, movement in Aurelia is what? Seasonal. Please take note of that. Don't try that. <laughs> Please do not try that. It can lead to death. This movement in Aurelia is actually vertical. A type of what? Up and down movement. Up and down. Vertical. Up and down. So please, that is all about class Scaphozoa. I believe you enjoyed that, didn't you? So the next one is class Cupozoa. The next one we're treating, don't forget that true jellyfishes belong to class Kyphozoa. So the next one is class Kupozoa, class Kupozoa, Kupozoa, Kupozoa. Now, what do you know about class Kupozoa? As the Medusa formed by this guy, you call it, you can't dice. When the medusa is joined to this, it becomes what? A kubo medusa. Kubo waiting medusa. So please, these organisms, in relation to the uh, Skyphozoan's medusa, please, the Skyphozoan uh, medusa dominates the Kupozoa medusa. So please, you can say that the Kupozoa in Skyphozoa. It is, more, it is much more dominant or much more conspicuous compared to 
the Medusa in the Kubo's ones. So please, the word Kubo makes them to, as the word is called, Kuboid, Kuboida movement. So please, movement in Kubo's ones. You call it what? Kuboida movement. The movement possessed by the Kubo's ones is called which of these? Amoeboid movement, sinusoidal movement, cuboidal movement, columnar movement, pseudo stratified movement. It's what? Cuboidal movement, as the name implies. So please take note of that. Apart from what we've mentioned already, all right, these organisms, they may, they may have some, uh, they have four tentacles. All right, and in some cases, you have uh, about the four tentacles occur in the form of what clusters. They occur in the form of what clusters. And please, the the Cupo medusa are smaller in size compared to the scaphos ones. So please, the organisms that is the the cupos ones, the cupos ones when they are two to three centimeter long. All right, they possesses tentacles that is about 30 centimeter long. Of the cupos ones that are 2 to 3 centimeter in diameter, 2 to 3 centimeter in diameter, they possess tentacles that are 30 centimeter long. So please take note of that, it is very, very important. Now, these guys they also possess rupalia. Rupalia itself is meant for what? They are, they are sense organs meant for what? Sense organs meant for transmission of what? Impulses. They are sensitive to touch, aren't they? They are sensitive to what? Touch. Now, apart from what we've mentioned, oh God, there's one thing that is striking about the Kupo Medusa, the Kupo Zwans. Now, these organisms, they have what is called uh, virulent nematocysts. Let me remember, virulent nematocysts. All right, virulent word, nematocysts. What is the meaning of this word, virulent? It is a substance that is highly poisonous. It is a substance that is what, highly poisonous. Now, if they contain nematocysts that are poisonous, it means that they are capable of killing even humans. All right. If they possess poisonous nematocysts, it means they can also kill humans. All right. Take note of that. Apart from killing humans, they are, they can they also feed on fishes that are much more larger than themselves. All right. I don't know how they are able to dominate this. How they are able to have this kind of feature? I said they have poisonous. The fact, how can they just, how can incinerators kill humans? Yes, it's possible because as soon as these poisonous substances are injected into the bloodstream of an organism, by the pumping action of the heart, it is taken to other parts of the body. So the guy now waiting, maybe, or I still, <laughs> that, is, that is how it is. All right, so I said they all, they kill and eat fishes that are larger than themselves. All right, so please, that is for that, um, Good. Sea wasps. Sea wasps. All right. Sea wasps are, um, how do I put it now? How do I put it? How do I put it? How do I put it? Okay, okay, okay. Now, these guys, sea wasps, they, they, you can say that they, they have features similar to that of our sea wasps. All right. Sea wasps are also called the cuckoo's ones. All right. You know, the sea, sea wasps are very, sea wasps are, they have a, how do I put it now? How do I, okay, how do I put it? How do I put Sea wasps are much more deadly than bees when they occur in clusters. Yeah. Sea wasps are much more deadly when they occur in clusters compared to bees. That's why you give them this feature. The cuckoo's ones are otherwise called sea wasps. All right, sea wasps, all right? They can kill animals. They can kill animals and even humans as well. All right, so please take note of that. 
Now these guys, they have a well-developed nervous system and complicated eyes. They have a well-developed nervous world system. So please take note of that. Um, is there any other parts that... Yes, these guys, they are exclusively waiting marine. They are all marine. So please, I... I did not give us, that reminds me, I just remember something now. I only gave you one example of class Skyforzoa. Alright, we have several diversities of uh, Skyforzoans. Alright, we have the Rhizostoma, the Rhizostoma, Rhizostoma, and Leuconeria. There are diversities of Skyforzoans. So this recording, yes, thank God. Yes, I have to check. Yes, uh, you don't understand. You don't understand. So, uh, rhizostoma and leuconelia are all scaphosoans. So, as for which of the following is not a scaphosoan? Right, Rhizos rhizostoma and rhizostoma, rhizostoma and leuconelia, excuse me, are all scaphosoans. Um, please take notes, it is very, very important. The polyp, oh god, please take note of this. One of the differences between the Kupo Mendu, the, the Kupo Zwans, and the Skyfo Zwans, all right, or the Skyfo Medusa. The polyp, the polyp of the Skyfo Zwans can undergo what's stabilization. All right, which is a type of what? A sexual mode of what? Reproduction. However, 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 these organisms, the cuposoans, their polyp cannot strobilate. The, the, that is, the polyp of scyphosoans can undergo strobilization to produce a feral larva, all right? But the polyp of, this, of the cuposoans are not capable of, of uh, undergoing what? Strobilization. So please take note of that. If they don't undergo strobilization, then what kind of asexual reproduction do they undergo? How do they produce? Or how are offsprings or progeny produced? So please, they undergo a type of a sexual mode of production called budding. Budding. If the polyp does not stimulate. It means that the pol the polyp on the agusmon body. The polyp buds off. This is a word. Buds off. Is it buds off or buds up? Okay. Off, yes. It's an incorrect pass. That was an incorrect pass. It buds off to produce what? Another organism. So the process whereby it buds off. It's called what? Body. So, at this point, we'll call it a day. Have I given us all that we need? All right. Kupo, Kupo Zuan's class. I believe we are done. I believe we are done. My, my name will talk nonsense. So, please, if you know you really enjoyed this video, please endeavor to subscribe and comment. You will ever make it. All right. So, please, comment, like, share. And subscribe very very important subscribe so that when I upload any content you will be notified by YouTube you understand that you will ever make it so please chat me up on this number as well now at 61153 do have a wonderful day God loves you or oh, uh, me